Environmentalism has its own church, the environmental activist movement, its own God, Mother Earth, and its own clergymen, like John Denver or Al Gore. Al Gore, it should be noted, is also one of the most forceful voices for the movement's real agenda, globalism. In his book, Earth in the Balance, he has a chapter entitled New Common Purpose, in which he suggests that unless the world comes together under a single central authority, we will ecologically self-destruct. The chapter closes with these sobering words. The time has come to make this struggle the central organizing principle of world civilization. Most disturbing and deceiving may be the fact that Al Gore claims to be a born-again Southern Baptist while preaching a gospel more reminiscent of tree worshippers or native or nature religions. For example, in his book, Earth in the Balance, self-titled Ecology and the Human Spirit, he says that modern man emerged 200,000 years ago, and he asserts that our blood has the same proportion of salt as the sea, because, as he says, that's where the first life forms evolved. The gospel of this earth must, of course, have environmentalism at its very core. That is why the ancient nature religions of the East and the newer teachings, like Gaia, are finding a newfound resurgence today. It is truly an opiate for the people in this 20th century. Well, if you think about it, Paul, really that's what the New Age movement is all about, and environmentalism is right at the core of it for that very reason. Of course we're concerned about the environment, and every person on this planet, Christian, non-Christian, we should all be concerned about this planet. This is our home, this is where we live, and so we're not at all advocating this idea that we shouldn't be part of the environmental movement. I think we should be. But the point is this. We have to recognize from a spiritual point of view that this is a spiritual battle taking place. And there are those in the world who have a hope of a new heavens and a new earth, which is the biblical promise. And then there's the New Age belief, which is really, if you summarize that gospel, it's a new age of peace and prosperity on this earth. So you suddenly have those whose focus is on this earth are very antagonistic toward those whose hope is a new heavens and a new earth. They're angry and saying, well, if you have hope in that new heaven, you don't care about this world. It's not a fair charge, but it's beginning to define the boundaries in this world today where people are saying, if you're not willing to put aside your beliefs in the name of saving the environment of this planet, then you're an outsider. And that is very much the form on which the new world order, which is forming today, that's the basis on which it's being built. For the New Age movement to gain worldwide acceptance, it needs a new world order. Now, many people are working toward that goal, but how much does the public actually know about it? The Illuminati, or Enlightened Ones, are supposedly an elite group of financial and government leaders who are dedicated to using their positions to win support for their pro-world government proposals. The question is, does this even make sense? How could financiers force an entire nation to pass unpopular laws that they want without the whole world raising an outcry? In 1992, French polls indicated a certain defeat for the Maastricht Treaty in the national referendum. Three days before the referendum, the Europe Monetary Fund collapsed, and England and Italy were forced to pull their currency right out of the fund before they could be devalued further. Sweden raised its short-term interest rates to 500% and chaos reigned supreme. The media suggested that the EC and the world economy would collapse without France, and a crisis was proof. In an 11th hour victory, France ratified the treaty 51 to 49%, and unification of Europe moved ahead. We asked Gary Kahl, author of the book En Route to Global Occupation, about the emerging global free trade zone. Yes, those organizations that are strongly pushing for world government, such as the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, and other groups, have long had as their goal to make uh, the countries of the world economically interdependent upon each other uh, in the area of regions. For example, the common market in Europe, uh, the North America Free Trade Agreement will bring about a kind of common economic market in North America, and of course in Asia we already have ASEAN. And they believe that if, if these countries could become completely interdependent upon each other economically, the natural next step then would be political union. 
And from there, it would be rather easy to take these regions into a world government. In other words, it's a lot easier to take 10 regions of the world into a world government than 200 separate individual countries. There are several elitist pro-world government groups, and most of them have been around for decades. The Illuminati itself was formed in Germany in the 18th century, and many of the founders of the U.S. Constitution were members. Other secretive but verifiable New Age globalist groups include the Builder Builders, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, Rhodes Scholars, the Freemasons, and the Club of Rome. Other groups, less secretive, but as determined in their search for world government and their New Age philosophy, include Planetary Citizens, the World Federalist Association, the Committee to Frame a World Constitution, and the World Association for World Federation, and the International Green Cross, and the World Constitution and Parliamentary Association. The Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission, groups instrumental in founding the UN, are at the same time open and secretive. Instead of using terms like world government, they prefer euphemisms like collective security, rule of law, world law, global institutions, and interdependence, and of course, new world order. Are we suggesting that U.S. leaders would be involved in such a plan? Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission members include Clinton and every American president and vice president since Eisenhower, except Ronald Reagan, and so many top-level cabinet members it would take the whole video just to name them. Ronald Reagan is an honorary 33rd degree Mason, Bill Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar, and so on. Public knowledge or not, like it or not, the New Age is in control of the New World.